last week, we talked about the terms of the covenant. And for some of us, we may say, how can I measure up? Because we may say to ourselves, we are not Jesus. But today in this message, I'm going to speak to you about a hidden mystery. In this wisdom, it is what Jesus himself used when he was on earth. Imagine that we get the secret to live without sin like Jesus. I spent this week talking to Jesus, meditating, and he said to me, when we get that wisdom and understand how God operates, we will be able to do and live like him while he was on earth. And he said, listen, read this word of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Paul said, we speak of God's secret wisdom. A wisdom that has been hidden. In some translation, they said, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before the world began. Amen and amen. You remember Jesus said, he was about to die, said, now glorify your son. <laughs> amen and amen. He's about to enter glory. The same glory is this time for us when we get this hidden mystery and to tap into God's wisdom. But Jesus was able to demonstrate the wisdom of God he, after he did a miracle. Jesus met a man, a demon possessed man. They, they brought the man to him. And you know, the man was blind. The, the man was mute. The man could not talk and could not see. And Jesus healed the man. <laughs> you imagine they bring you a man who can talk, who can see, and Jesus healed him like nothing. They were astonished. We read that story in Matthew 12. They were astonished. And they said, could this be the son of David? <laughs> but Jesus had a problem with the Pharisees. Listen to this, verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by, by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this Pharaoh drive out demons. Jesus is mad. Jesus is mad. And Jesus is going to answer them. Jesus said something extraordinary. He said every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. Man and amen. If you think the devil, the demons are divided among them, the kingdom of Satan divided against the kingdom of Satan, 
you have <laughs> not rich understanding. Amen and amen. Yes. He said, if Satan drive out Satan, he is divided against himself. This is why I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you cannot play with God and play with the devil. This is the first wisdom to know. God give you his contract, his covenant, and you said, let me play with God for a little while. I'm going to play with the devil. You cannot be in the kingdom of God and you are divided with the kingdom of God. You cannot be in the devil camp and you said, you know what? Today I'm going to church and enjoy Jesus. No. You are going to get into trouble. Verse 27. And if I drive out demon by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So there is casting out that's going on even in the world of the devil. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, I cast out, and they cast me out also. But Jesus was able to reveal me something. It is, it, it's not really casting out, it's submission. He said, you know what? There is a greater power here. Let's make an exchange. This is what the devil is doing every day. And sometimes, you know, somebody will be a victim. You go and play in the cape of the devil, he said, you know, you are my good sinner here. And that little sinner is messing up with us. I'm going to kill him for you. <laughs> but the kingdom is not divided. It's just an exchange. Okay, he tried to get you, I'll get him. It's like somebody come and rob your house and you have an evil heart. You already got your gun ready <laughs> and set a trap <laughs> and, and shoot the person. But really, Jesus is asking them the question. So there is a lot of casting out going on. <laughs> but you must understand how they do that. And he said, so then they will be your judge. That's when those evil people you see out there doing some casting out themselves, they will be your judge. And he said, but if I drive out demon by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. My God, my God. So, you becoming a Christian, you are saying that you are a part of the kingdom of God. And you have in the Ten Commandments, the terms of the contract, guess what? You must stay in the kingdom of God and understand the kingdom of God on how the kingdom of God operate. The kingdom of God operate by the Holy Spirit. For you to be able to live without sin, you must be like Jesus. Operate every day of your life with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus went so far and tried to explain something to them. He said, Oh, again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry, and carry off his possession unless he first tied up the strong man? Then he can rob his house. Because, you know, the devil, his job, he's a thief. Killing, stealing, and destroying. Kill, steal, and destroy. When you are a sinner, this is who you want. You are out there killing, stealing, and destroying. You may say, oh boy, no, I'm not killing. Oh, yeah, this is what you do, know, really. So the devil, how the devil operate? You know, he said, you know, you're stronger than this guy. He's always with the strong person. You, you know, you know, you, you want to rob him, <laughs> tie him up. <laughs> this is why you see a lot of people are asking for prayer, you know, to help them 
to be on time. They got a, they got they are in slavery. The devil got them bound. And this is what happened when you sin. Understand what I'm saying to you. You got the covenant. The covenant is good for you. The ten commitments are good for you. But you cannot appreciate them because you don't know the wisdom behind it. And you don't have any force to cause you to obey. You are not using the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm saying to you, Christian. You see yourself, you said, you said there are some part. I'm good, God. I'm good. I'm not going to commit adultery. I'm good, God. You know, I'm not going to steal. I'm good, God. But there is some part, boom, you're in trouble there. In the part that you are strong, guess what? You've been using wisdom without knowing it. You are always alert. Oh, no. You know, that good-looking girl come to you and say, Oh, no. <laughs> I'm running away. <laughs> so, wisdom. The Spirit of God cause you to be on alert. But there is some part you let your God down. Amen and amen. And Jesus said something in verse 30. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatter. So, when you disobey, the Lord said, you know, there is a conspiracy against me. You know, there is obedience, disobedience all over the world. Guess what? You are scattering the people of God. You become a bad example. And then, He's going to explain to you the Holy Spirit. He said, And so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. So, Jesus is saying something here. They are the unforgiven of this world. This is a category you don't want to be in. You are a sinner. It's different from an unforgiven. I want you to make the difference. A sinner will eventually lead to be unforgiven. But a sinner is not automatically and unforgiven. The unforgiven are the one, though prompted by the Holy Spirit, though trained by the Holy Spirit, but however they decide to defy God, to say that I will not listen to you, Holy Spirit. I will disobey purposely. And he said, he went so far and said, anyone who speak a word against me, Jesus, will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. So, when Jesus went to heaven, he said, I will give you the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is not something to mess with. It's not somebody that you can disrespect. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, you see, can cause you to be banished in hell. And I'm going to reveal you a secret. You people that are sinning out there. You don't know what you are doing. The devil, he is called the devil because he will not apply the Holy Spirit. He was there in heaven. He saw the hierarchy of heaven. God, his 
his word, Jesus, and God's spirit. And he decided and said, I will not embrace God's word. I will not embrace his spirit. Jesus is the first testimony come to us. And he said, I'm going to heaven. And God is going to give you the second counselor. Guess what? A sin present itself. This is what Jesus used to be sinless. And you are going to do the same. To become sinless. And the devil cannot trap you. And the devil cannot get you. You are going to use God's word. And you are going to use God's spirit. You combine God's word and God's spirit. You become like God. And this is why Jesus is saying to us. You see me, you see the Father. You see me, you see the Father. When I see you, I don't see the Father in you. Guess what? You are the devil, the devil's child. If I see you falling in sin all the time, guess what? You do not resemble the heavenly father. So, the ten terms, the ten commandments must be mastered. Must be mastered the same way Jesus mastered the ten commandments. And he said something extraordinary. And you imagine Jesus defending himself from the Pharisees and he's giving you a knowledge. He's teaching you about the Holy Spirit that you can use. And Jesus said, Patrick, you know all my miracles. You analyze them, you will see the hand of the Holy Spirit in all of them. I said, I, I said I'm going to do some study. Amen. Listen to this. He said, make a tree good, its fruit will be good. So, it doesn't matter of where you are in life. The Holy Spirit can make you good. My God, my God. The Holy Spirit can make you good. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The Holy Spirit can change you. The same way, listen to this, make a tree bad, its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. So the devil is out there making you unfruitful. The devil is out there to cause you to produce bad fruit. Amen? And let's go further. He said, how can you who are evil say anything good? So, your mouth, this is something that you must pay attention to in order to obey, to showcase righteousness. You must be careful about what is coming out of your mouth. Remember, Jesus is saying unto us, it's not what you put in. It's what's coming out of your mouth. Amen and amen. That can cause the Holy Spirit to not deal with you. Imagine you like dirty jokes. Or you like, you know, talking about trash. The, the Holy Spirit said, you know, goodbye. And you will find yourself what you're saying. And you ended up doing. Amen. He said something. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speak. The good men bring good things. Out of the good stood up in his heart. 
Amen and amen. This is the key. Every day, Jesus was making provision of goodness in his heart. And I said to Jesus, whoa, 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 I get something here. Do you mean you were doing an exercise of goodness daily? He said, yes. I said, yeah, how you do that? He said, you start with the Ten Commandments. If you cannot see the, the goodness in each of them, you will never obey them. My God, my God. And I'm going to do a little, a little test with you. Let's, let, let's pick up the first commandment. He said, Thou shalt not have any other gods. Listen. You shall have no other gods before me. We are going to analyze that. Let's analyze that. Let's enter deeper. What is the wisdom? What is the, the mystery in that commitment? There is two things for you to see. First, you said you believe in God. And you are before God. You are before God. Loyalty, integrity, honesty. Guess what? I am with you. And yes, I'm worshiping somebody else. Where is your loyalty to the covenant? Where is your integrity? Where is your honesty toward me? Where is your faithfulness toward me? Amen and amen. And when you are unfaithful, you know I'm not obligated to obey the contract that I have with you. And the wisdom of it, you obeying the first commitment alone and knowing it and obeying it cause you to be closer to God. Guess what? When you show your wife that you are not going to fall for another woman. You know, she give you a little more love. So you who want more love, you make sure you obey the first commitment. He said, God, you are my God. <laughs> and that's when you're ready <laughs> to be in love. God said, boy, you didn't fall for that. Look at that. You are not worshipping nobody for real. I test your heart. And you know, the devil sent sin or the God your way. But you stay true to me. And this is for your goodness. Imagine you, you are ready. And the devil bring you a, a compromise. You are not going to fall for it. Amen. So, let's go further. Verse, and he said, the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So, when you know the wisdom of each commitment and you stored up goodness and not evil, because you know how you stored up evil, you say, ah, this one I will not obey. That's when you make provision to not obey when the, the, the circumstance showed up or the test showed up. Verse 36, but I tell you that men will have, will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken for by your words. You will be acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned. So, what you see on the internet, people are bragging about sin. But all these people do not follow them, although they may say, I am Christian, but I do this, I do that, you know. You do not follow them, because they will be judged. You don't want to be judged with them, because you... You are exercising 
wisdom. And let's go back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You are going to see something. And this is how you are going to stay away from sin. Verse 10. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So, the Lord Jesus said, I do not leave you alone. I left here the Holy Spirit for you to use. He will reveal you all things. Guess what? You will have to make use daily of the Holy Spirit. In every occasion, you go in somewhere, you know temptation will be there. Guess what? Be on God. Be on God. And he said, verse 11, For who among men knows the thought of a man except the man's spirit within him? So, the thoughts of God, how God wants you to react, must be revealed to you by God's spirit. So, if you want to be like Jesus, you must use God's thoughts and act according to God's thoughts. Amen and amen. You must be out there asking uh, the Holy Spirit, what is the hidden treasure? What is the wisdom, the secret wisdom behind each commandment? This way, especially the commandment that you are lacking. Okay, you, 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 you strong. No, you're not committing adultery. You're strong. You're not going to steal out there. But, you know, there are certain commitments you are not strong. These are the commitments you should work with the Holy Spirit. And he said, In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. So you imagine, God gives you His Spirit freely, and you are not using it. Let's go back to Matthew. And this time you are going with me to chapter 13, verse 11. He said, the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given has been given to you but not to them the secret of the kingdom of god because you know they were criticizing jesus for for his miracle and jesus said the secret has not been given to the pharisees <laughs> but even to you people out there he said whoever has will be given more and he will have in abundance if you tap into into the wisdom of god into this hidden mystery god will give you will reveal to you more things this is how amen you stored up good good things for you to use when the occasion showed up the devil will come to you in disguise. And this is usually after you Christian, you sin, you realize, oh boy, <laughs> you make a mistake right there. But if you store up goodness in you, you exercise goodness, sometimes you enter meditation and you see, there is a scenario here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Apply that, apply this at your job you you know if you are a salesman or whatever you whatever you are doing in life in your profession apply it use wisdom and you are going to see the the, the inner working of the devil to to
to lay a trap for you. And every time he comes, you will be like Jesus, without sin, unspotted, holy, before your God. Like I said to you, every time you obey God, the relationship goes closer and closer. Imagine you and God totally in love. Your righteousness is no longer filthy rags. And God can say, you are not filthy. I am holy, you are holy, and there is a union right there. And Paul said, this is a glory. Verse 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for they had, for if they had, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. Amen and amen. In the part that I see here, he said, verse 6, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So whatever knowledge you may think you have, how you can rationalize and not obey God, guess what? You are set up for destruction. And the glory of God you will not get in your life. Jesus was able to live on earth without sin. And if we call ourselves Christians, we must be able to live like Jesus, sinless, holy in the sight of God, by using this hidden mystery that we can discover through the Holy Spirit. Let us embrace the Holy Spirit. Let, let us live according of the dictation of the Holy Spirit. And you will see the Lord your God will bless you. And you will not be among those that he will curse. I bless you this day to be obedient to your heavenly father. In Jesus name. Amen.